forever. Dog. Forever. Dog. Welcome to Forever Dog. You can listen to this podcast ad-free on Forever Dog Plus by signing up at foreverdogpodcasts.com slash plus. And make sure to follow us on social at Forever Dog Team and check out all of our podcasts at foreverdogpodcasts.com. Thank you for your support and enjoy the show. My name is Alex Berg, and I host the podcast LGBTQ Nation. Every Thursday, we focus on major topics affecting the queer community and speak with the nation's brightest thinkers, journalists, activists, politicians, and more. Recently, we've spoken about topics like anti-trans legislation, anti-Asian hate, and how the policies of the Biden administration are affecting our queer community. This is the place where we can have real conversations and learn about ways to affect real change. Don't wait any longer at LGBTQ Nation to your podcast rotation and subscribe today. Only on Forever Dog. It's episode 13 of the never-ending season of Drag Race, and it's time for some green screen acting, darling. Um, but you can't wear green or anything reflective, and you have to get pawpawed by a giant puss. Ooh. And to, on the runway, we're serving hot, hot pockets. pockets. Plus, genuflect at the altar of Cher. It's the lip sync song, Strong Enough! <laughs> it's a blessing. At the end of the episode today, we're going to have a top four for season 13, so stay tuned. What's that? What is that? Is that another live stream? Oh, yes, honey. Oh, my God, I love those! <gasps> Gird your loins, chasers. We've got a special event coming up. On Monday, April 19th at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, we're having a Race Chaser live stream. Uh, Are you smarter than a Roo girl? And a meatball. That's right. Uh, Yes. This is our very special quiz show, gaming trivia contest mm -hmm. to raise money to help save our favorite bar in Los Angeles precinct. That's right, featuring the guest talents of Katya Zamalachikova, Mayhem Miller, Meatball, and others. Stunts, tricks, questions that drag queens should definitely know the answers to, but probably won't. Like, what is a weft? And or, why does it burn? Or, how do you make it do what it do? Uh, if you know, you know. Um, so, head on over to Holla Race Chaser. Holla at me, you know. Holla at me, you know me. <laughs> Holler at me, I know you know me. Holler at me, I know you know me. Uh, so head on over to racechasertickets.com to get those tickets. $10 for an amazing evening of entertainment with your favorite divas. Uh, and it's all to support the cause of saving an important queer space here in Los Angeles where I perform and suck dick. That's right. Racechasertickets.com. Get your tickets today. Please. Bye. Bye. And bye. Goodbye. Forever. Dog. Hello. Hello. Hello, and welcome back to Race, Race Chaser, Chaser. Mm. a podcast dedicated to the discussion, dissection, and dissemination of every single episode of RuPaul's, RuPaul's Drag, Race, Drag Race, starting from the very beginning. This oh. is the brain. <laughs> Gagatrandra, you and I know. My name's Alaska. What's yours? Hello, I'm Willem, and I got the Gagatronda sweats, and they are comfortable. I just ordered mine, and I can't wait to wear them. <laughs> they have pockets. They're very, um, the the font choice is bold. I love them. Get some new sweats, Gagatrondra. <laughs> did you see last week's episode? It was so fun. The girls did a tag team blind makeup application mini challenge, and then the girls got ready to roast the Miss Congeniality title holders from the past seasons. And Lonnie Love, Sandra Bullock, oh, <laughs> um, Lonnie Love and Michelle Versage were there as comedy coaches, and they helped the queens prep their material. And on the main stage, the girls roasted the girls, and uh, some Shut girls were rude. Shumana girls were rude. Shumana girls were crude. Um, Utica got a double middle finger salute from RuPaul. Candy won the challenge. And Simone joined Utica in the bottom. And uh, Simone got to extend her stay. 
at the RuPaul Manor for girls, and Utica hit the house. And now it's down to the final five. Yes. Um, Utica got read for filth unanimously by all of the judges uh, and um, and then said, I thought that went so well. <laughs> She's very positive. Honey, She's very positive. Very positive. Yeah. Let her be. Let her be. Um, she writes a lipstick message uh, and it says, hey, goobers, so happy to have you in my life now to my Sisters, I love you so much. I love yourself. See what it said. <laughs> Redacted. Oh wow! Oh, they're sending secret messages, y'all. Redacted oh my god! Uh, Redacted Tondra sweat sweatsuits now available. <laughs> um, love yourself inside and out. Wiggle to the top. W- wiggle to the top. Utica. Work. Um, I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of Utica, and you know, yes. It, her roast performance was an epic fail, but I have a feeling she really connected with a lot of fans and a lot of viewers. And um, I don't, I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of Utica. Honey, those kooky girls stick around, like the Milks, the Ivies. Um, kooky girls. Kooky girls. Like, oh. <laughs> like, the Thorgy. She's not like, named after a cookie. <laughs> no, like the, not, not Nabisco hoes. Um, mm. I'm talking like, <laughs> The, the quirky girls. Mm-hmm. Hey, quirky yeah. girl. Hey, quirky girl. <laughs> it's Kinda true. Weird. Um, it's true. The girls are celebrating Candy's first win, though, and mm-hmm. she points out that neither Aja nor Dahlia won any challenges their season. Oh, I know. Can you believe it? So she she's she's gone further than her family members, and she's very proud, and it's a very happy moment for the girls. Um, Got Mick is really getting into the idea that she's actually good at writing jokes, mm-hmm. and uh, and she was like, you know, I was like, I'm never doing a roast, and that, but now she's ready for the roast. So who knows? Oh, honey, I got a, I got a roast idea for the mom girls. Oh, the really? Sis- the sisterhood of traveling rants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, should we? We'll, maybe at some point we'll do a mom roast tour because we have some amazing divas. I need the could, divas. Who could really lay? I mean, Delta work at a roast. Oh, shit, girl, please. I'm scared. No, she would actually liter- bring a roast too, trimming too. <laughs> Three kinds of gravy, a place setting. <laughs> She yeah. would. And now, can you believe it? It's finally the top four. Wow. Top. Oh. Top. Wait, or is it top five? It's the top five. They're mm-hmm. battling for the top four. Mm-hmm. It's a fight to the finale for the top four. And all the divas want to be there really bad. Um, the yeah. next day, the girls come in the workroom and they're like, oh, we all fit on one side of the table now. Uh-huh. Acting like they're sad. they say the video meshes they say there are no small parts only small actors but if you're lucky one day you might meet a small actor with some very big parts yes peter dinklage oh oh oh, oh. give it to me he's Um, awful tall but it's worth the climb oh (laughs) <laughs> Enough, of- ma'am. I'm, ma'am. I'm four feet and eight inches. <laughs> oh, enough about the four feet. Tell me about the, eight, the eight inches. inches. <laughs> oh, oh, Peter Dinklage. Uh, Rue comes into the workroom and she has a mustache on. She obviously yeah. saw my Tiger King TikTok performance and said, <laughs> "You know what? I'm gonna do it too." She's like, "Baby, let me show you how it's done." She said, "This is let lace me. front." Mm-hmm. This is a full lace cap mustache. <laughs> the lace goes up into my nostrils. It is a full lace um, cap. Um, wait, what was that? What was that? What was that? Oh, it's a full lace cap. Cap. <laughs> <laughs> The queens this week will be starring in the sci-fi adventure. Hanny, I shrunk the drag queen, stupid. Uh, it will take place on the drag race set, and the queens will play tiny, teeny, little, itty, bitty, witty drag queens. Uh, the characters are archetypes of great movies. We have mm-hmm. Don- Dominique Perignon. She's the mean <laughs> one. Margarita. That's the smart one. Brandy mm-hmm. is the sarcastic one. Chardonnay is the whiny one. Makes sense. Ginger ale, the dumb one. Mm-hmm. So right off the bat, I mean, you know Olivia is going to break out those sneaker wedges. 
She's gonna say, <laughs> "Honey, I'm ginger ale," and she does. You knew it. You she does go it. for the ginger ale gig, um, and the girls are fighting. Schweppes. Yeah. Honey, is it Schweppes or is it Canada Dry? <laughs> oh, it's dry. <laughs> um, Candy and uh, Simone both kind of want the same role, and Elliot's oh, right. not there to make them audition. Um, well, what but were it, they gonna do? I mean, they, they could have auditioned. They should have both read a, a part and then let the girls decide. You know. You can read for it. By secret ballot. It's not offer only, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, but We're you, not reading top of show either, honey. We so. would, we'd be happy to bring you in um, for an audition. Um, there Actually, there's a cattle call. There's Why a cattle you call pre-tape? audition. You should pre-tape. Just to actually. work out the kinks beforehand, before you get in the room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, the script is very thick and very large. Um, a script like this is big and long. Um, they all the love the script. Script reading and- till the crack of dawn. <laughs> They they love the script. They think it's really funny. I thought it was really funny too. Yeah, it was um, good. Gottmik thinks that um, that Olivia should probably like stretch herself and not do the dumb one because they've seen it before. Well, you know, you know. I mean, that's, it's, it's the thing. The thing that's hard about this is like it's kind of like the producers saying, "You guys, we wrote these about you. Just do the part that's you." Right? Do you think that? I mean, it, it couldn't be more cut and dry. It's very that. It's very uh, suggested. There's five parts. They're all kind of these girls. Um, yeah. And it, it, wait a second. Okay, I need mystery music behind this because the names of all the characters are named after alcoholic beverages. And which one of these queens is named after an alcoholic beverage? Beverage. Rosé. Ha. Ha. Did she win the challenge too? She did. Yeah. Uh, Spoiler. Spoiler. Oh, they set it up. Mm. Deep. Mm. Layered. (laughs) Layered of Rigatrondras. I literally just thought of that. I just noticed that. But, girl, I don't... Who knows? We don't want to give any spoilers away in case you haven't seen the episode, but for some reason yeah. you're listening to this podcast. Um, Maybe uh, you could just de- use your materials to deduce from fabric.com and find <laughs> out if we left any scavenger clues there hey, on our break. Did anybody go ahead and make an outfit from scratch? No, they were trying to learn lines. They were like, I'll just wear one of these outfits that I haven't used yet. Yeah. No time to make a purple unitard. Uh, no, 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 fashion. no time for that. I love no. the names. Overall, I really love this challenge. Um, what wrote- would you have done if, if you, if you get invited back for another season of drag race? Um, because there's rumors that there's lots of things going on with the girls. Mm-hmm. Um, if this were to come to pass on your couch with you sitting there, would you say y'all need to read for it? Because I think that's the most fair way to do this in the future. Instead of just go hurt feelings later. Fuck that. Y'all work it out. Let your sisters decide who gets it so everyone can be their best possible, you know? I would happily audition for a role if it came down to it. Well, your yearly review's coming up. But I I mean, who knows? Rubber Dog Brass. They want that brass shiny. (laughs) Anything is possible. I might be going away to summer. Camp, who knows? Oh. No, I, I know nothing. I haven't heard anything. Not wet, um, not hot. American summer. Um, mm. The cold, dry American autumn. <laughs> cold, dry this, Canadian this autumn. Big Canadian fall. Um, Rose is talking about not having a lot of options left to wear. And honey, the cupboards are bare. I've seen, some, I saw one of the episodes, and all I could see was just a lonely yellow fur coat. Not, not many outfits left. Yeah. Um, I know that can't that the outfit that Simone ended up wearing is an outfit that she actually borrowed from Kate from Gottmik. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the thing is, the reason they're really having trouble is because you can't wear stones, you can't wear reflective, you can't, you can't wear, wear green. green. So and this is I'm glad they're addressing this on the show because this is something that you've talked about before. You kind of it, it kind of throws you for a loop. You're like, oh, an acting challenge, but you can't wear this, this, this and this. Mm-hmm. Go. See, I um I can roll out of the dressing room in dirty laundry and be completely happy. So this would not be a problem for me. But I know that a lot of drag queens are concerned about their appearance and what they look like. 
Mm-hmm. Some of them are uh, just green too. Some. <laughs> So, and so this is a struggle, but the girls are figuring it out. And they're borrowing, and that's great. Um, Simone is really struggling with this, though. Yeah. She knows that she's coming from the House of Avalon, who are amazing. And they're all perfectionists. And they go to great lengths to consider every detail when it comes to a look. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she's feeling all of this pressure. And I really felt for her in that moment because it's because it's like, because I I mean, that girl, once it gets down to the end and yeah. you're like, even if you're doing great the whole time, you know, I mean, it happened to me. No, I, I don't. Fucking... I wasn't there at the end. <laughs> it sounds fun, though. It happened to me, though. I was doing, you know, I was doing great. I saw and then I cracked because of all the pressure I was putting on myself. So, like, I completely felt for her in that moment. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, hey, it's Scarlet. Oh, wait. Oh, never mind. We're uh, going to take Scarlet's, a break. Scarlet's not available? We'll, uh, we'll wait. <laughs> We're going to take a break and get Mess- Scarlet on the horn. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness or is preventing you from achieving your goals? I mean, there's a lot going on in the world right now. There's uh, political unrest and upheaval. There's misinformation. uh, And um, it can be uh, very daunting and very overwhelming for a lot of people. Hmm. Um, BetterHelp is a great resource for online counseling. That's T. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist with a broad range of expertise to choose from. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses from your counselor. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions from home. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. And it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling with financial aid available. So if you're looking to talk to someone or have been meaning to find a counseling service, now is the perfect time to take advantage of our special offer. You can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash drag. That's BetterHelp.com slash drag. For 10% off your first month. BetterHelp.com slash drag. Professional counseling done online in the comfort and safety of your own home. Helix Sleep makes personalized mattresses in America and ships them straight to your door with free no-contact delivery, free returns, and up to a 100-night sleep trial. I've got a Helix. You've got a Helix. What's not to love about a great mattress that gets delivered right to your door? Helix made a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. With Helix, there's no more confusion and no more compromise. You get just what you need. They have a range of firmnesses and sizes just for you. Ooh, how was the quiz on the firmnesses and sizes? The quiz is self-reflective. Uh, it's a moment of self-reflection, getting to figure out what you like with your sleeping. It's easy. It's fun. It takes less than two minutes. Mm-hmm, I know what I like. I, I like the dusk mattress. Uh, and what are you waiting for? You've heard us talk about the Helix on the show forever. You should find out for yourself. Seriously, go to helixsleep.com slash Drag. Drag. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for up to 100 nights risk-free. Right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders for Race Chaser listeners. Get up to $200 off at helixsleep.com slash drag. are back oh oh Ooh. hey it's scarlet Scar- hey no we were gonna do you before the break but you were late so hey it's scarlet i hey i love that it's uh, i i i love it how familial it is hi hey hey it's scarlet is that well, it was is that has, funny to you that's funny to me no one ever refers to her as scarlet it's always scarlet johansson so Scar that's Joe. why I think it's yeah. That's, that's why, why it's, I think it's funny. <laughs> it's odd. Hey guys, it's Scarlett. How's it going? Like she calls all the time. Like she calls all the time. Like it's a. Uh, 
she's like, hey, guys, I was wondering if I could, if actually I could play one of the roles in the in the acting challenge. I'll be uh, playing RuPaul. Because- <laughs> As a tree. A Japanese tree. I'm not trying to talk Night shit. Night in the drag machine. This, this is the Scarlett Johansson that there's a scandal because she was trying, she was like arguing to play a trans character, correct? She's played a lot of different characters that I think she now ha- knows that she didn't maybe have business playing. I think a lot of us did, though. Um, she definitely yeah. played, I think, Ghost in the Machine or Ghost in the Shell. One mm-hmm. That was like a... That was a... An Asian character? Japan animation. Okay. Of the show. And, um, but that happened in Speed Racer, too. You know? Mm. It's been happening a long time. Um, the Zoom call... The girls all got to ask their little questions to Scarlett. And um, we got to see the ones that they wanted us to see. I I really want to know what she said about everything, you know? I love that they're doing this new edition. And this is one of those things that came out of quarantine times that is, I hope they carry it over to when it's not quarantine times. Like these, these cool, like fun mm-hmm. video conferences with like major fucking ho- Hollywood hard hitters. Okay, mm-hmm. this is so fierce. Um, uh, uh, Scarlet tells uh, Scarlet we're on a first name basis. Hey, hey, Scarlet. Hey, Scar. Um, she tells Candy that even if you're playing the villain, you have to love the character, and so that makes it realistic. I, I like everything like that. that Candy did. She kept it like kind of based in reality a little bit, as much as she yeah. could. Yeah. Um, but what Scarlett said about like having the whole backstory in your head and like knowing the character and all that and practicing it before, mm-hmm. like you have to do that. And some of I, some of the girls are more focused on what they're going to wear in their outfits, right? And it's uh, you know, this is this is not the time to not have your bases covered on everything. Um, Got right. Gottmik asks the leading question: um, How do you stand <laughs> out if you have a smaller role? And that's basically what Scarlett just answered. Right. Yeah. Is Gottmik a producer this season? I swear. Gottmik is so good. So, Scarlett, like, like goes the extra mile to ask the question that is is dealing with someone else's, like, issue in the in the moment. I love it. She did it on behalf of Denali with yeah. Annie Hathaway. <laughs> oh. Annie! Hey, it's Annie. Hey. <laughs> maybe, they'll get Jen, maybe they'll get Jen Aniston. I mean, Jen and I... <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll call Jen and I'll ask her if she wants to do Drag Race. I'm sure she'd be up to it. Oh, yeah. Why not? Right? Chance to get out of the house. She and I just, we spread a vino on our skin and mm. we drink Evian and... Smart water, honey. Well, we drink Evian. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, Rebel. This is, you guys. Rebel Hearts. I see you. I really pull it back the curtain. She prefers Evian. Listen. Oh, wow. That's, sometimes that happens. I always <laughs> knew you as the Aquafina girl. Jen, you know what? I'm going to ask Jen if she wants us to cut this because I don't want her to yeah, get in yeah, trouble with the smart Poland, water people. Poland, Poland Springs thugs coming to get us. <laughs> um, This green Crystal screen. Crystal Geyser. We want to take we want to take a second to talk to you about Crystal Geyser. <laughs> Crystal Geyser. <laughs> is, um, okay, Crystal what Geyser is, is a great drag name. It is. But it's really is. spelled G-U-Y-S. Uh, we, we know. I know her. There's a, shout- there is a Crystal Geyser. I love that. Crystal Geyser. <laughs> yeah. Work. Shout out, friend of the pod, Crystal Geyser. Ooh, I um, hear the girls that um, call me Brenda have a Crystal Geyser in their green room. <laughs> Brenda, call me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Crystal okay. Fountain shut off. Is That's that Crystal? Crystal? Yeah. Berg, she's fierce. She's Shout painted. out to Crystal Geyser. She works in a tight establishment, clearly. Clearly. Show me the girls. Okay, so. Mm, patterns. Patterns. We Classic get patterns. <laughs> we get a, a directing uh, by uh, Michelle and Carson. Uh, Carson's wearing a muted blazer. Um, <laughs> they're in the director's chairs. Uh, Michelle took a break from the Steps music video. Uh, to come and direct. I love the Steps music video. I think Sorry. they're called Steps because the choreo is mere Steps. 
Excuse me, that choreo was sickening and simple and very effective. Arms, 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 spin, 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 smile. And um, they put in the showgirls uh, nail flash. Oh, I'm sure Mr. Esther Haas is thrilled. Uh, Simone is second guessing herself already. And mm-hmm. it's clear where this edit is going very quickly. So I don't want to dwell right. on anything that's unpleasant for me and my L.A. friends. Uh, but she looks great. That dress yeah. is sickening. Beautiful. That dress is a, it's a legacy garment. It was seen on Jade from Little Mix first. <gasps> Ooh. She's I love that. Down. The girls were really running out of clothes and Simone was bugging. And um, it's nice that her sister provided LA girls working together, the WeHo girls. She was totally bugging. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Michelle is trying to give her direction. And um, I don't think it's going... It's going in, but I don't know if it's being processed. Right. Dipper um, is so frozen and his face is so funny. I need to do a screenshot. <laughs> he looks really he looks surprised. Like, he looks like a bear that just got <laughs> woken out of hibernation. And there, there's like a choice between cheese and peanut butter and he doesn't know what to do. Which one? Left to right? Cheese, peanut butter, or ass? <laughs> He's he tries just... to grab all three with four paws. It's just us. Oh my God, we're alone. Just, oh my Alaska God. is the host. Now work. You're the host. I am the host now oh. of this podcast. <laughs> oh, all I right. Gonna... What do we do? All Go right. Rogue. That's it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. No, we still. Okay. This is where we go completely off the rails without Dipper to <laughs> when to take a break. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, Candy is having. Well, I don't think Candy was having trouble. I no. liked Candy's delivery and I liked Candy's rewrite because she was saying, oh, my wicked beauty. Do you mm-hmm. know that's a reference from fucking Paris is Burning? Is it? Wicked beauty here. She's wicked, wicked beauty. beauty. Oh yeah, Octavia Saint Laurent when she's talking about all her facial expressions, right? Yes, I think it's absolutely a better line than my beautiful wickedness, which is the direct line from. It is, you know, but they they can't go ripping off Paris is Burning implicitly. <laughs> they have to only do it, you know, <laughs> over, over right. Yeah, go to the source. They can't yeah. do it. They can't do it one hundred percent. But you know, thank God for uh for minds like you. <laughs> I love all the sight gags in this acting challenge. They crawl up the side of an oversized electric cord. Uh, Yeah, so cute. Very like uh, Postcards from the Edge. (laughs) There it is. Postcards from the Ledge. I don't know what that means. Uh, um, Olivia is, is that girl that, you know, that Fifi was on my season asking questions. That we all just wanted to go, shut up. Stop asking. Come on. Right. Like, what if they say no? Let's go, Little Miss Wedge. Right. You kind of just have to do it. And if if it's really not working, they're going to let you know. Yeah, Um, they'll let you know. If if they don't laugh, that's how you know. Um, Excuse me. Can I I ask a question? Excuse me. May Uh, I ask? So this, this this microphone, is this what I speak into? I feel like my character would deliver it this this way, though. Is that okay if I deliver it if I deliver it over here? Well, listen, I'm here to explore, and <laughs> um, God bless her. She's just trying choices. to. She's just oh. trying to be bit. Oh, oh, he's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. Oh, did one of you get an alert that says you've been made the host? I am the host now. You I must am travel. The host. This is reminding me of like the really early chat rooms. Yeah. Where you could I I could you you could in you could make someone like an admin or like a I can't remember the phrases. But it, it's the very it reminded me of a very early chat room moment. Wow. So we, we finished the podcast while you were away. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're all finished, Dipper. We did our homework. Well uh, done. See you next week. Bye. Bye. We're going to gym. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, some of the girls walk into the workroom. They love the 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 challenge. They love the um the script and the movie. Um and the jump from final five to final four is a big deal. 
So yeah. everybody's trying to make it to that final four. So this is the go time. To I, I like that the show in this next part at the mirror, like kind of addresses what like, it's like one, it's the elephant in the room. Now it's like, the monster's eating its own tail. Like the girls are worrying about how the outside world will perceive them on the show that they're mm. currently filming, which hasn't even been edited yet. You know, they're already worried about that. They're right. Like, they're not just playing. When we were on, one of the things that they said is just play the game, get out of your head, that type of thing. And like now right. at this point, like all you can do is be in your head because there's only four bitches, five right. bitches left. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I, I can't imagine doing it nowadays at all. No, thank you. Like worried about oh, oh yeah, who's going to hate you, who's going to like you. Oh, my gosh. But Simone is feeling that pressure, um, I think, because she did poorly at the roast last week. And like just seeing her interview where she breaks down is so sad. So and sad. It's also great story arc. So great story arc. Uh, but I mean, I very girl, genuine. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 100%. girl who what? Who I mean, threw I know, a tantrum at the end? I know a girl who said that, uh, you know, that arc got her her crown. Well. Showing variety to the judges. Honey, varietals. Variety. Ver- cinema verite. Okay, we're going to take a break <laughs> and we'll be right back. Thrive Market is an online membership-based market on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everybody. Shopping with Thrive Market is healthy without the hassle. You can easily shop by 70-plus diets and values like keto, paleo, gluten-free, vegan, and more. Um, I love Thrive Market because I can basically edit out all the stuff that I don't want, that I can't eat because I can't eat um, yes. stuff from cows and stuff. And yeah. that's really nice to be able to just like not have to shift through and look at a bunch of ingredients. Like they did that for me. It's so easy. What do you love about it? It makes it so much easier. You just click gluten free, click vegetarian, and you go shopping. It's great. And honestly, the packaging too, like it's all recyclable and it breaks down to like nothing. And you're like, yeah. okay, um, these aren't plastic bags. Thrive is great. Not mad at all. Yeah. Thrive is so great because you can get so much from them, not just food. They've also got organic and essential groceries, but also clean beauty, safe supplements, and non-toxic home supplies, clean wine, and more. Thrive Market has two membership options, a one-month membership for $9.95 or a 12-month membership for $5 a month billed at $59.95. And an exciting new offer that's exclusively available only for our listeners. Join today to get 25% off your first order and a free gift. And with member-only prices, you'll enjoy enjoyed guaranteed savings because Thrive Market members save an average of $32 on every order. Plus, orders of $49 or more are shipped for free and delivered with carbon neutral shipping from their zero waste warehouses. Join Thrive Market today to get 25% off your first order and an exclusive free gift. The only way to get this free offer is by going to thrivemarket.com slash drag. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash drag to get the exclusive offer of 25% off your first order and a free gift. You can't get this offer anywhere else. Nope. Go to thrivemarket.com slash drag. And we're back. Boston um, Tea Party, Boston <laughs> Celtics, Boston Red Sox. Boston She Party. Uh, <laughs> Honey, this is about to be a Boston Tea Party, darling. Because we're about to spill it. <laughs> and he. <laughs> the tea is not silent. <laughs> uh, the girls all really want to make it to the finale. Um, Rose, she's kind of giving this casual glam, Becky on the beach. Uh, like version of herself now. She's like, you know, I've evolved. Um, she, I'm letting my guard down. I'm being myself. Yeah. Which and she, she has. said she came into the competition too self-aware, which I mean, I get because you're just like planning for all these yeah. things that are you've made up in your head by like, you know, this directive or this prompt. So you're like, you have this whole scenario in your head and then you come there and you're like, oh, wait, this is totally different. This is a mini challenge outfit. Why did I do this? So it's like, I right. I'm one it's you can't help but be in your head. 
And the girls totally. are talking about representation on TV. Mm-hmm. And this is the part where, like, it's wonderful because one of them says that, like, you know, he didn't see himself on TV. And now someone like him will see themselves on TV, you know? That's T. And representation is extremely important. And, you know, I mean, Got Mick talks about, like, Chaz Bono. But Got Mick is like, Chaz Bono is is great, but Chaz Bono isn't me, you know? Chaz Bono is, like, a masculine, you know, dude, and Got Mick is more, like, femme presenting, you know? And and I love that Got Mick was, like, in the trans community so often it's, you, you're seeing Barbie or Ken and never something in between. And so Got Mick is representing ev- everyone who falls uh, anywhere on the beautiful rainbow spectrum. Yeah. Um, Do you? What was your representation? What what was some early representation that you saw on TV? Like when I saw myself, definitely. um, When you watched episodes of yourself on (laughs) the many TV shows that you've no kind, no kind. (laughs) Um, First of all, whore. uh, You junkie whore. I think the first time I really identified with like what I could be or like what I saw myself doing was Julia Roberts and pretty woman, just like that blonde wig, the outfit, putting on the drag, Mm -hmm. the gigs and like Mm -hmm. thinking I could do that. I can be a prostitute. I can wear blonde hair. Um, And after that, probably the criminals from don't tell mom, the babysitters that who steal cars because like (laughs) I, I could tell you how to jump a car. Could I do it? I don't know, but I've been in cars that have been jumped. Like I think the, the, Criminal syndicate world was always very appealing to me. Um, and, and podcasting. Podcasting was my fallback. So what was your first time that you saw yourself represented? Um, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman in Batman Returns. Oh. I was like, hell oh, here. and also Jessica Rabbit. Um, uh, I, I. You brought her, you brought that picture to your doctor, huh? I did. I did <laughs> both pictures. I mean, I don't. Well, Catwoman pulls a fucking raincoat out of the back of the closet and chops it to pieces and sews it back up, and then is a cat cat suit uh, mm-hmm. with dental floss. We know you love a um a patent moment. I do. Your peak by patent. The, that isn't really representation because one of them's a fucking cartoon character w- with a deep voice. That was Kathleen Turner's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other is, uh, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer. But uh, uh, they were very inspiring to me as characters and and went on to inform my my drag career. But I don't I mean, I still th- this is why drag race is so important, because we mm-hmm. do get to see drag queens in a 360 light yeah we get to see that they're people with hearts and families and lives and and desires and emotions and like that's it's i you know i i love the show and i'm i'm just really glad it exists girl one of one of the one of our sisters told me that when she saw me on season four she liked my drag and that inspired her first drag and then she told her drag mom and her drag mom said, that's not drag, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's what Alexis said about me to Fanji. <laughs> about my gold outfit with the chains and the little, that, and she said, that's not drag, oh. baby. <laughs> okay. But I love that Vanderella was inspired. Like, I love all, like, her Rihanna and her Fenties. Like, we inspire the children. And that's nice to know a little bit. There's all different types of drag. Mm-hmm. Ugly drag, girls can do it, too. Sometimes it's just about buying shoes. So. Yeah. I mean, um, well, who's credit card? Rub- <laughs> RuPaul's. First of all, let's get it together before you want to read. Um, RuPaul is in a shimmering silver and bluish fringe gown with a structured belt. Uh, uh, meh. What do you mean, meh? Meh. I, I, it's, She's- it's, I don't like when the light goes through it that you could see through it. It feels like sequined off fabric again. Okay. Like draped and then belt and like manipulated but sequin dotty girl sequin i need dotty. an I, i've uh, <laughs> i bought drugs for her <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it was twice. She just <laughs> sounds kidding. like a drug dealer. Right, sequin Dottie. Honey, call Sequin Dottie, honey. Here's her card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. There's some white stuff on the edge of that card. Yeah, that's the card. <laughs> Uh, Cynthia Revo looks lovely and I'll have you and she is wonderful to drag queens I met her at the Toronto International Film Festival Mm. when Starsborn was performing and we were like right outside the bathroom and I was like are you a singer and she's like yes and then once she talked I was like oh I know exactly who you are and then we got a picture of our nails together and her nail like her nail her nail and handscape with the rings and the nails and the the jewel gorgeous just, she turns a whole jewelry scape. She, oh, yes. honey, she loves the look. And yeah. uh, the RuPaul's Drag Race stage is all the better for it because she's an accomplished performer. We're glad to see in a, uh, someone worthy of that seat there for sure. And the runway category is Hot Pockets. <laughs> yeah, pockets on pockets, toots. Mm-hmm. Let's get into some of these looks. Simone is turning it. Mm. I love every second of this. Wow. Yes, perfection. The way the red pops off the blue. Yeah. And this big zipper thing. She looks just like cool. Like what girl wouldn't want that in her outfit, in her, you know, repertoire. You and I po- love. You do the- Polly Pocket to a mix with uh, <laughs> Beat of My Heart. You know. <laughs> uh, one hand in my pocket <laughs> and another one. <laughs> Oh, honey, you didn't think I was just going to do that now, did you? Tell DJ, it. turn it up. <laughs> yeah. Turn the music, sure. turn the music. The scene hair is one of my favorite silhouettes of hair to ever exist. I love this. Such such a beautiful look from Simone. Yeah. The back is going to be tangled as fuck. <laughs> Olivia is giving us a silver stoned mini dress, oversized bow pockets, kind of... um. Uh, kaleidoscopic um, shapes. Yeah, and she says it's like stone for the gods or something like that, something referencing the stones. And this is just a chance to see that don't waste your time stoning stuff before you go to Drag Race because you can't tell at all. Yeah, sto- it's more, In yeah, stones really, d- for some reason, don't typically read on those cameras. But I will say, I think, does it fit the prompt of pockets? I mean, that's debatable, but... There's I think two. I mean, it's plural, so it is pockets. Yeah, I think this is the most beautiful that Olivia has looked the whole season. As far as the hair, the makeup, the garm, the color, like I, I think she looks outstanding. Same. It's a salute. Um, Olivia's <laughs> Rosette. Got, like, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're talking she just about got, like this charm and like this bounce in her hair, and anytime a girl's yeah. hair is bouncing. It's just like is a good runway for me, and she's bouncy. Yeah, definitely. Um, Rose is giving us a black and white mod latex pocket dress, rain poncho reveal, pocket, 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 pocket. pocket. Yeah, I love this. I love this. I just the hair is the wrong shape for her face. I feel like she needs a little break right here. To just round off that squareness, like oh, two little tendrils, maybe keep that ponytail popping. Okay. Yeah, but like it, the hair, if she wants to wear it like that, it needs to be bigger because it's distractingly, it, the proportion is wrong, I feel like. But the outfit is so cool. I like that she did the mob thing, but like I have a face like her, so that's why I'm telling her. And right. she might listen. If you listen, I'll help you. This is really a fantastic uh, garment. Both all garments th- are really fierce. All the and things you r- could keep in it? Oh, yeah, she's, honey. She's a walking apothecary, honey. Honey, don't go through those pockets. You don't want, you don't want to know what you'll find. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Not without a glove. Uh, <laughs> next up, Candeliza Musington. Oh, wow. It, the, it looks like a, a Fraggles dryer lint trap. Okay. Uh, it's yeah, it's 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 artsy. It's soft sculpture. Um, oh. and it's a Japanese inspired 40 pocket look, she says, but make it hoe. OK, see, I didn't I I'm sure it's referencing something. Uh, it, to me, I mean, the garment, I, I think the garment is interesting. And there's a lot going on. And there are a lot of details you can get into. The hair is where where this look kind of loses me. It's not 
it's not the best like delivery. Mm -hmm. Uh, But you know what? And we'll get to this in the judges critiques at this point. When they say pockets, this is not something that you can just, if you don't like your outfit you brought for this category, you can't just very well whip something up on the pockets. You can't. So she kind of was fucked. She was like, I know I don't like this look either, but this is what I brought for pockets. So I feel for her. Um, Got Mick is giving a trench coat. Uh, would you like to buy a sundial? Uh, Honey. Uh, flasher. Is, you know wow. who this is by, right? Uh. So the coat is by Godoy, and then the, the outfit outfit is by Howie. Wow. Howie's turning it, as always. Um, So cute. The shoe is Christian Cowan. It's got, like, watches across. It's just, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a shoot, bitch. It's wild. It's beautifully done. Such a good idea. Uh, campy, sexy. The gold is also referencing the the dress that um, it was like. A, was it Brittany or Kylie or was the blondes did a sort? Was it Beyonce who did a sort of gold like chain dress just like that? That was me on season four of Drag Race. We just <laughs> talked about it. So, girl, okay. get your facts right. Okay. Please. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to get written up by by the mom execs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I totally saw that shape, too. It was very the blondes. Very yeah. that. Um, but now we get to watch the Henny I Shrunk to Drag Queens. Um Episodic so adventure. It should have been a mini series. This is the longest main challenge I've ever seen. Video product. I love this challenge. I'm. This is now. This has now become my my uh the challenge. I wish that I got to do on my season. Maybe there will be a redemption. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> so basically, if you haven't watched this episode, Candy's character, Dominique, shrinks all the queens with toxic overhead lighting because they <laughs> voted for her to go home on the main stage. You got the overhead light right here. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no, 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 no. And this is true. Sometimes they light us booger boots because it makes their job easier and they're not worried about us being pretty. They just need to get us yelling at each other in an office building in Culver City <laughs> that they're calling the Gold Lounge. But it is an office building. We are actually in an office with stuff stapled to the wall. That is an office. Um, it is not gold. It is full of delusions. Um, what all episode, that glitters is not gold. <laughs> all that glitters might have mold. Um, what episode of that clip of Rue? What was that? Season ten or eleven? You think? Ooh, I don't know, but she looked good. Gorge, gorge, and she shine. looks stickling, honey. Really, so really good. lovely. Oh wow, um, that's drag. There's a lot going on in this story. Michelle comes in. She steals everybody's makeup when she thinks they're gone. That's so funny. A cat comes in and attacks Gottmik. That was funny. Um, uh-huh. They jump off the table. They land on India Farrah's breastplate. The, uh, the India Farrah missing the reel. breastplate in, in, in every county, by the way. So <laughs> Missing reel. Because they jump off the table and then it like, cuts away. And we just hear boing. And then they're, they've landed. Uh, missing reel. It's that's okay. What we, it that's what we did in ticked off grannies with knives too. When we couldn't afford to shoot a sequence, we said missing reel. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to the next one. A uh, grindhouse. Uh, <laughs> the girls grow back full size by reading Dominique to the dirt, which makes no sense. But maybe they'll clear it up in the sequel. <laughs> maybe they'll ret- retcon that in the sequel. Retcon? What's that? Uh, retroactive continuity. It, like, oh. if something makes no sense in the original movie, but they remake one years later, they'll do... WandaVision. S- the, right. They'll add a line to, like, mis- like Star Wars did it a lot. We need to do that for some of those Patreon videos. Oh! <laughs> really bad. We're going to take a break on that one. Perfect. Well, we'll take a break on that one. <laughs> Let's 
let's get busy. Busy drag queen. Yes, honey. As the first hard seltzer with antioxidant vitamin C. That's right. Busy brings something unique and delicious to the table. These flavors are unexpected pairs that go perfectly together, and we know a thing or two about perfect pairings. Oh, Am I right? Yeah. I love my co-host. Yeah, I, I like pairs too. with some cheese, honey. Uh, too, yeah. yeah. And we know there are plenty of hard seltzers out there to choose from, but with eight bold and delicious dual fruit flavors, Vizzy makes the choice a little easier and a lot tastier. We have pineapple mango, black cherry lime, Ooh. strawberry kiwi, mm. blueberry pomegranate, Ooh. papaya passion fruit, <gasps> oh. watermelon, stra- watermelon strawberry, <laughs> blackberry lemon, mm. and raspberry tangerine. Ooh, and Ooh. this month, Vizzy is also launching its own lemonade hard seltzer in four delicious flavors. Watermelon, peach, raspberry, and strawberry with the same antioxidant vitamin C. Honey, I'm going to combine the watermelon, peach, raspberry, strawberry, and have a new one called Ambrosia and just <laughs> chug it because it sounds delicious. Also, those the- lemonades do sound really, really good. But let me, what are these, these dual flavors? I can't wait to try. Okay, give me the papaya passion fruit. Just give mm. it to me, please. I love a papaya, honey. Yeah. You do it. With Vizzy, you can enjoy refreshment. Now with antioxidant vitamin C. And at 5% ABV, 100 calories, and less than one gram of real cane sugar per can, Every sip of Vizzy is more exhilarating. Upgrade your hard seltzer to Vizzy. To find out where you can purchase Vizzy, go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash drag. drag. That's VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash drag. Must be 21 and over. And fun. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What is that about? What's going that's on? That's the UK Minute song. Oh, it's British. that's right. I think. Yeah. That's right. As you may know, there is a very exciting uh, podcast called The Chop, hosted by Latrice Royale and Manila Luzon. And you can listen to it, and they talk about Drag Race UK. And the very special guest on this week's episode is the one and only Lawrence, Lawrence Chen. Winner of RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Sorry if that's a spoiler, but where you been? Where you been? Where you been, Toots? It's Latrice Royale. And I'm Manila Luzon. And this is your UK Minute. We have recapped the whole season two of Drag Race UK. Did you enjoy it, Latrice? I had a blast. This was really an awesome season. Mm -hmm. Um, And so since we recapped it all, we have the winner of season two here to answer all of your questions. I cannot wait. Hopefully she isn't wearing any fucking H&M. <laughs> <laughs> so check out The Chop every Tuesday here on the Mom Network. That um, episode of All Four of Us too. that was so much fun. I hope you all listened to that. Um, we're going to listen yes. to what the judges had to say about these girls on Episode 13, season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race right now. Um, Simone, they review first, and Michelle was really happy with how the skit turned out. She thought Simone was great. Mm -hmm. Cynthia loved the acting choices, and everybody loves the runway look, of course. Yes. Um, Olivia, they're really, they wanted to see more versatility. They thought it was one note, and the look, they thought it wasn't about pockets it was beautiful but it wasn't pocket 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 yeah and next to rose who gave us like a pocketeria um she was so great in her skit her she just did great this week um michelle loves her look her makeup the proportions and cynthia loves it cynthia loves the a-line she just did that aretha project which was amazing y'all watch that 
cool. Yeah, dude. C- so Cindy Arriba is fucking good. She's so good. Um, uh, c- see what? Um, okay, Candy. You know, the, there. I think it's really about the look. I mean, you can't really come for her performance in this challenge. I thought she was really strong. I mean, you can come for her performance in this challenge as evidenced by the judges' critiques because they're nitpicking at this point and it's their job to come for every little thing and give them options for editing. And they went with like this weird edit that I'm sure the audience didn't agree with. Like as we have eyes and ears, most of us, um, and I think we all can agree that Candy did great. If they want to gaslight us and say <laughs> things that she didn't, yes. that's fine. But they should just say, honey, you were funny, but your outfit is booger boots. Do you know your words? Do you want to get ready? Because that would have been a much truer reaction from Michelle. Because, I mean, we know what you're thinking at this point. You have to say something bad to justify why, you know, homegirls are right. wrong. But right. it's going to be fine. Rue and Carson are <laughs> trying to fine. figure out the references <laughs> Candy was going for. And they just like, they're like, um, uh... <laughs> It's just right. doesn't, it doesn't get there. No, got Mick on the other hand. I mean, everyone is gagging over this look. RuPaul is like ready to ready to wear it for season uh 14's promo. Honey, and she will time and time again, let me tell you. <laughs> Won't she do it? Yeah. Um the- and the acting challenge went very, very well for Got Mick as mm-hmm. well. He what wore- did you think of Michelle's comment about olivia should have played the villain and candy should have played the ditzy girl to like stretch their act very little i thought very <laughs> little of it um uh. yeah and any anyone you know just because you're on the west end does not make you an actress coach all of a sudden honey okay like i'm going to the west end and i'm nobody's actress come on so i'm not giving advice on it i i think it's a stretch Seeing Olivia as a villain would have been like seeing Tina Burner as an ingenue. Oh. It just wouldn't translate. Right. And I I thought that they did give some really Ange good... Dude! <laughs> <laughs> I thought they did give some really good, like, acting notes. Like, yeah. when you are playing a character, it it is better to have, Wear like... blonde hair. Peaks... <laughs> To have peaks and valleys like if you're like if you think of rose nyland she's not just an idiot her her sort of naivete comes from the fact that she is just really sincere and takes everything at face value that's more interesting than just like she's dumb you know yeah she wasn't dumb to that little girl scout jenny lewis and she stole her bear back remember that i love when rose gets her bear back <laughs> her bear back <laughs> Oh, get we got our bear back too from the break. Our bear disappeared for a second, but we bear. got our bear back. Cut the <laughs> crap and get back the damn bear. Um, <laughs> so, asked the, the, oh. go ahead. Well, I want to, before we move on, I want to know what you would have worn for pockets. For pockets? For the hot hmm. pockets look. <sighs> I would have just think? shown my boy pocket. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's a little spot on your hip. That's the first spot that um girls get filled in when they get body work. It's like an ass divot because Yeah, on the side. It's boy pocket. Boy yeah. pocket for sure. Girl, um, I can keep fucking I can keep walnuts in my boy pocket. <laughs> and crack them. <laughs> um she she's making she's making nut pies down there. Uh I think if I were to do a pocket um oof Polly pocket. I I was I thinking think that Den- but I feel I feel like somebody probably did that. Denali I think was doing a sort of take on Polly pocket from what she posted on Instagram. Maybe I just misread. But I no, would, I think that's I would what she was going for. I kind of love to be like the inside of a pocket like to go with this like Honey, I shrunk the whatever scale. Like, if you turn mm. the pocket inside out, you'd see, like, pocket lint. Lint. You'd see, like, Penny. a dime. You'd see, yeah. like, half a nail. Mm-hmm. Um, a, Like, some, like, a rubber band. Right. A hair tie. Like, I'd be, I'd love to be a pocket with all the stuff inside of it, but, like, coming out of my asshole. And then you pull out a, a 20 and you're like, I found a 20 in my pocket. <laughs> I can't believe this. My uh, key, a rumpled 20 that's been through the wash. Right. Yeah. I've yeah. That. that kind of thing. What, what, um, if, what about a pocket knife, Willem? I oh. don't really use pocket knives. I use butterfly knives a lot, mostly. You use big knives. Butterfly. 
yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a Mariah Carey song. knife in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> really sharp and pointy I'll, danger. I'll stab you in the thigh. <laughs> um. <laughs> if you were on the stage this evening in July of 2020, what would you have said when RuPaul asked who should go home and why? Would you have said Olivia? I mean, well, they're consistent. They all said Olivia again. They did. And, you know, I mean, she deals with it. She deals with it gracefully. It's it's hard because I I get the feeling that the other queens are also really good friends, which doesn't, you know, mm-hmm. it's like you're not going to say your sister. Yeah. And I think that. Olivia was weakest in challenge slash runway, whereas Candy was strong in challenge and weaker on the runway. So same. Yeah, I probably um, would have said Olivia. I do like this glimpse when uh, Simone, when they tell the girls to hit the house and to go in the back for a second and all the girls leave <laughs> and Simone is still trying Standing to put on her there. shoes under her pants. Yeah. And she says, leave that in. <laughs> that uh, is me. Amazing. That was a lot of girls. That was Latrice. Latrice. There's a shot of Latrice standing next to her boots at one yeah, point. Uh-huh. Latrice one, at one point let the couch wear her dress and she just wore a pillow uh-huh. and untucked when you can't sit in your stuff. There were multi- <laughs> Latrice will take off anything. This is how it's done. I she mean, don't care. no, you're standing on that stage for an insane amount of time. Honestly, it's if you literally were... <laughs> four hours standing. If you're wearing a, a wide leg trouser, literally, if you're planning on going to drag race, you know, you could take sewing lessons. You can learn how to do your makeup. But what you really should do is stand still for two hours straight in one spot in heels. It's very hard. Walking around, you can do all day. Standing oh, yeah. still, very, very hard. That'll so. get you. You need to keep moving. Light on your feet. Twinkle toes. If your toes are moving. Okay. Um, so the winner of this week's episode is Rosé. This yes. is her second win. She got a cash prize of five grand, mm-hmm. which basically means she has Miss Congeniality salary already. Girl, yes. They're safe the, girls. The, t- the cash tips are flying, darling. I don't think they're cash. I think they have to pay taxes on them. Oh, well. Which sucks because- It's not all $1 bills. <laughs> Honey, they're they're reporting tips. Let me tell you, the good people over there, uh, the safe girls. Did you are sign gone. out? <laughs> you were no. We report. Yeah, we pool. And then, did you tip out the buster and the dishwasher and the runner? Did you tip out Sarge, the hostess? Yeah, <laughs> Sarge and Duncan. Mm-hmm. Rue needs her cut too. No, you uh, were late last week. Go- Gottmik and Simone are safe, and the bottom two are Candy and Olivia. And uh, well, is this but a drag queen? Hell, oh, oh, <laughs> is this a drag queen lip sync song or what? Honey, how did we just lip sync to this last week? And we did not know in previous intel that this was the lip sync song. Oh, we, we didn't just lip sync. I'm not oh, we lip sang syncing. live. I'm sorry, I forgot. Gotta love, gotta love. I'm not lip syncing. <laughs> gotta love. Oh, glitter, right? Um, it's from uh, it's uh Wigstock. from Wigstock. Oh, uh, okay. and D Light is singing on the rooftop. I'm not lip syncing. Um, the lyrics of the Why'd song. Why'd you come for Rue like that, though? <laughs> The lyrics of the song, of this very fabulous Cher song, go, you gotta go, was she worth it? The was so she good. worth it was the part that sold it when Candy looked at her and it really was just funny. like, oh, we know who's winning. We clearly know who's winning. Olivia, uh, Olivia did a great job, probably. I didn't watch. Um, I was My eyes were glued to Candy because she was funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, Really she good. Gotten, she would have gotten my dollar, but I would have tipped Olivia too because she's my sister now. Um, yeah. And watching her go is like a little bit of a heartbreak, but all puppies have to grow up. So, yeah, very beautiful, very lovely, very graceful and such a such a light and such a such a great spirit. Um, Olivia, she says a friendly reminder to live life to the fullest. That's right. She's really pushing this live angle, honey. Honey, girl. Yes, do it. Put it on a T-shirt. Live. Now, um, what happened in Untucked? Well, there was an um, issue. I, I, what did you think of Untucked? No, 
what, maybe other people are having the same issue, though. It didn't, I didn't push through until today. Yeah, I didn't get it yesterday. Okay. And so it didn't appear on iTunes until this very day. And because we, it was this bad is, and boring. This is, oh, dear. Okay. Like, it was, it, no girls are yelling at each other anymore. Nobody's fighting. There's no new Tamisha merch. Do you, <laughs> Fuck this untucked. Who's arrogant? <laughs> Do you think I'm arrogant? Do you think I'm arrogant? If you don't have star quality, you can leave. You can leave. Um, <laughs> this, uh, well, do you think that Olivia getting the, the she gets a phone call from her family members. Do you think that? Yeah, because she needs a ride from the airport. Do you? Do you think that getting the and we always see the the drag queen crying when they receive the message from their family? Do you think they're crying not because they're emotional, but because they're like, "This means I'm going home." <laughs> they're getting my story out of the way. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I I definitely agree. Yeah, it's the writing's think on the wall, honey. It really is because I mean, and please. Fire off down below. I know that it doesn't mean you automatically go home if you get the the video message from your family. But sometimes that is the case. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> like if you a just a little bit of story out. Like if you just got red booger boots by all the judges and then you come back to untuck, you're feeling like shit. And then they're like, Oh, we have a video from your from your let's mom. Make her cry. That Ooh, was pre recorded. Yeah, and we perfect. were just we needed to put it in somewhere, so it, yeah. I would be pissed. They needed to wedge it in somewhere. I would be pulling Jiggly Caliente. None of you motherfuckers got a call from your mother on the day that you got red at the bottom. True. Okay. We um, thank you. We thank you very much. <laughs> also on Untucked, Rosé said Olivia, um, she didn't feel the fire from Olivia. But mm. Olivia's got heat. She does. We could have brought anybody. <laughs> Paul Abdul. <laughs> Janet Latoya. Jackson. Janet. One thing about Olivia is she's very, Reby. very sexy. <laughs> Reby Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us on Race Chaser this week. What a wonderful day. <laughs> we love... I- oh, I'm Alaska. I'm Willem. Hi. Um, Hi. <laughs> hello, 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 and welcome. Oh, okay. Back. We oh. would love. <laughs> we would love for you to write a review of our podcast on the podcast app, and don't forget to subscribe and take a moment to leave us a rating too. Five stars are over, please. Mm-hmm. Follow the dolls. Follow the dolls at Willem at the Only Alaska Five Thousand, and our Race Chaser account is I know you know our name at Race Chaser Pod. And our mom podcast account is at mom podcast. Holler at me. I know you know me. We also, have, we also have uh, bonus video content available now on patreon.com slash Willem. Mm, climb the paywall. You can search for Race Chaser content on there. Search the hashtag Race Chaser. We have really great videos on there coming out all the time. We just released one of Share Trivia and Sherry Hokey. When the Patreon's gone, <laughs> it'll be released on YouTube. Uh, we also have YouTube stuff. Go check out our YouTubes and email us at racechaserpodcast at gmail.com, please. That's right. Wear a mask. Wash your hands, socially distance yourself, and respect each other out there in the world. Remember to take off your makeup before bed, dear. <laughs> I'll send the dolphin. Never. <laughs> Race, Chaser. Race Chaser is not endorsed by World of Wonder, Viacom, or any of their subsidiaries. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. RuPaul's Drag Race and all names, pictures, audio, and video clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and or copyright holders. Forever Dog. Race Chaser with Alaskan Willem is a Forever Dog podcast. Produced by Big Dipper. Executive produced by Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Mixed and mastered by Will Pitts. Our theme song is Race Chaser by Alaska Thunderfuck. Oh.